Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4's DLC Far Harbor. My name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique radium rifle known as the Kiloton Radium Rifle. Of course to acquire this weapon you will need the Far Harbor DLC installed. Now first of all you need to join the faction the Children of Atom. This opportunity will present itself rather early on in the DLC or you can just head to the nucleus straight away do the appropriate quest and join. So once all that is done we need to head inside the nucleus. The nucleus being the Children of Atom base. On the map, the nucleus can be found to the southwest of the town of Far Harbor. Once in here, we need to hunt down Kane, the weapons and armor merchant. Once you find him, be sure to speak to him and head to Barter. And then across in the weapons tab, we will find the Kiloton Radium Rifle. As always, this weapons price will vary depending on your character's current charisma level. As always, before modding it out and checking out its base stats, I have reduced all of my character's special attribute stats to one. I also have no bobblehead poke or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the Kiloton Radium Rifle. So now on to modding it out, and as always you can mod out yours however you want, but this personal build is what I think to be the most powerful. So first up for the receiver we're going straight to the bottom of the list and adding the powerful automatic receiver. This improves the damage and the rate of fire. It also reduces the range slightly, but who cares. Next for the barrel we're going with the long ported barrel which gives superior recoil, range and sighted accuracy. It also gives it poor hip fire accuracy. But as we can see, the range has been bumped up by about 84 points. Now for the stock, we're going to be using the recoil compensating stock, which gives exceptional sighted accuracy and recoil, better aim with scopes, and improved bash damage. Next, we're going to be adding the large quick eject mag, which gives superior ammunition capacity and improved reload speed. This modification will take the magazine size from 20 to 40. For the sight, instead of putting a scope on, we're going to be using the reflex sight, which gives better focus and sighted accuracy. Now, although you might squeeze a few extra extra accuracy points by putting a scope on it, we're going to mostly be using this for downside shooting, so the reflex sight is again in my professional opinion, the best option for this weapon. And finally, we're going to put the suppressor on because hey, why not? It reduces the range slightly and increases the accuracy slightly. And as we can see, it suppresses sound from firing, exceptional per shot recoil, improved recoil control, and as stated, it gives poor range, but I mean in all honesty, 161 range is not poor at all. So now that this is done, let's have a look at this. So it's base ballistic damage is 54, and it also has a base radiation damage of 50. That's pretty damn big. It uses the 45 ammunition, it has a fire rate of 90, its range is 161, its accuracy is 82, its weight is 21.3 pounds, and its value is 688 caps. And where this weapon makes me smile. Up the top, Kiloton Radium Rifle. Bullets explode on impact, doing 15 points area effect damage. So basically what we have on our hands here is spray and praise oldest psycho sister. Okay now there's a lot of different damages here that we need to talk about. So the ballistic damage can be increased of course with the commando perk. Then we have the radiation damage which can be increased with the nuclear physicist perk. Then we have the 15 damage explosion per shot which can be doubled up to 30 with the demolitions expert perk. Then on top of that something like bloody mess we have some serious damage on our hands. After doing all this I got the ballistic damage to 119, the radiation damage to 100 and of course the explosion per shot up to 30 explosive damage. Now these are big numbers considering that they're all delivered at once and that this is a fully automatic machine gun. This isn't a one shot every couple of seconds rifle, this thing is slinging slugs like pest control. Now the radiation damage that this delivers is also delivered with the bullet and not with the explosion. So although if you're hitting the ground close to you or walls or the enemies just standing too close to you, you can be hit by splash damage from the explosion from the impact of the bullet, however your character will never receive any of the radiation damage delivered by this gun. So it can't be coupled with things like the ghoulish perk. But overall it's probably a good thing that you can't cop any of this radiation damage. Okay, so now in actual use, the Kiloton Radium Rifle I found to be absolutely fan-bloody-tastic. The only real downside we've talked about earlier, which is if you accidentally hit yourself with the splash damage from the explosion of each bullet. But apart from that, this thing absolutely blows every other weapon out of the water, both metaphorically and literally. Now, of course, people are going to compare this to the gun Spray and Prey. Now, although Spray and Prey has an ammunition capacity of 100, and the Kiloton Radium Rifle has an ammunition capacity of 40, never once did I have to reload in a single combat sequence. So 
having that extra ammunition would mean nothing anyway. This also does more damage, it also delivers the radiation damage, which of course will reduce your enemy's health by 100 every bullet that hits them, provided they have zero radiation resistance. Of course, making them easier to kill. Not only that, but the explosion damage from each bullet has many uses. Of course, it has AoE effect, so if you shoot one enemy, you're likely to kill enemies standing next to them. It can be used to take out those really annoying Myloc egg nests. Instead of having to shoot each egg individually, you can just shoot in the general area of the nest and wipe out all of the eggs and those pesky little hatchlings. If there's a frag mine on the ground you want to get rid of, you can shoot in the general area and it will blow it up. If your enemy's hiding behind a wall, you can shoot on the ground next to them and kill them with that. So this is pretty good, I'm not upselling it. This is a suspiciously superior weapon. The biggest thing that I was worried about would be the range, and again, absolutely not a problem whether inside of vats or outside of vats. The range and accuracy both performed much better than I thought they would, especially if you're aiming downside outside of vats. This increases the accuracy and concentration of the fire greatly. Also, another thing I was worried about was the recoil, and let me tell you, outside of vats, you will not even notice the recoil on this. I can 100% guarantee that during a combat sequence at no point will you have to readjust your aim due to recoil. Never once did I have to. Overall, this weapon is 10 out of 10. I mean, forget choosing factions based on choices or moral dilemmas. Join the children of Adam to buy this gun. Forget good guys and bad guys, this thing is more important. If you ever need to assassinate 1 million metric grams, this is the gun for you. And it's also named after what it's going to be doing for you. In regards to your enemies, it's going to kill a ton. And here it is, the Kiloton Radium Rifle in action. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen, I have been Camel and this has been my guide for the unique radium rifle, the Kiloton Radium Rifle, found in Fallout 4's DLC Far Harbor. I do hope that this video helped you in acquiring it and understanding how incredibly powerful this gun actually is. If you did find this video helpful, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This of course will take you directly to my Fallout 4 Guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely, or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 Guides that I upload. If today happens to be Monday, please follow me on Twitter. The link will also be in the description. And with all that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.